Good evening. Welcome to St. Bartholomew's as we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time and also our kickoff to Catholic Schools Week here at St. Bart's. We welcome any of you who might be a visitor with us today. If you are, we thank you for joining us in prayer. We hope all of you have a worship aid and can participate fully in our liturgy. We ask you to remember in your prayers this weekend, Luke Patrick Cron, who will be baptized and welcomed into the Christian community on this weekend. I direct your attention to the second page of the worship aid. There are a couple of new acclamations they will begin using this weekend, starting with the gospel acclamation, which you see near the bottom of page two. Allow me to sing it and then join with me. It goes in this manner. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alleluia. Try that with me. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alle, alle, alleluia. Alleluia. And then on the fourth page of the worship aid, the holy and the um, mystery of faith and the amen are all actually based on a glory to God, which we are familiar with. Here's how that holy goes. I'll sing a part of it and then ask you to join me. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Try that with me. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. On the mystery of faith in the Amen, our cantor Karen Kepler will sing those once through and our repeat is actually built in, so follow her direction. Our opening hymn is found in the worship aid. We are called to tell the story. Before we sing of that story that we share, let us stand, greet those among us, and remain standing for the hymn. Oh, 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, as we enter these sacred mysteries, celebrating the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, let us do so by first calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you taught with authority. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you healed the sick. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you offer forgiveness to all who hear your voice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came, came, to me, came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you, a prophet, to the nations. I appointed you, but do you gird your loins and stand up and tell them all that I command you. Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. 
For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you, for for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me, free me. Incline your ear to me and save me. constant refuge, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold, my God, free me from the hand of the Trust, O Lord, from my youth. On you I have leaned from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my help. I will sing of your salvation. I will sing. I will sing. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially, and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially. Then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, they drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them, and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, I'm going to start this homily out with a confession. Um, I'm going to have my Catholic school education challenge today. I'll tell you what happened, because I think this is funny. Um, so Richard had approached me earlier this week and said, well, um, we're going to have a guest presider at the 1030 Mass tomorrow, so you'll need to preach that. I was like, oh, OK. So I've kind of sketched out something and thought, oh, I'll study that Sunday morning make sure that I really know that before I preach it. So we come to this Mass tonight, and five minutes before we start, Father John said, well, you know, you are preaching all three Masses this weekend. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, so when in doubt, when a priest and a deacon have a problem, there's only one issue, the only one thing to say, blame the liturgical director. Richard! <laughs> We're also counting on the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think we're going to be okay. But I say that especially because we're being filmed tonight. Hi, Rocky. And my sister, Pat, who was a Catholic school teacher as well as a public school teacher, falls asleep to this Mass in Tomahawk, Wisconsin, every Saturday night. And so she'll be grading me. Pat, grade on a curve. So let's see what I remember. I remember that I was going to start out with this story. It seems there was a Franciscan, a Dominican, and a Jesuit uh, brothers. And they were walking down a street, and they were arguing about which order was the most popular, the most serious one. And all of a sudden, before them appeared an apparition of the blessed family of Mary and Joseph praying over the baby Jesus in a manger. Well, the Franciscan brother dropped to his knees. So humbled was he by the poor circumstance of this family, this child lying in a manger. The Dominican dropped to his knees. So awed was he by the presence of these two great saints and Jesus Christ. The Jesuit went up to St. Joseph, put his arm around his shoulder and said, have you thought about where you're going to send him to school? True Jesuit. It is Catholic Schools Week, and we're going to talk about Catholic schools, Mr. Fox. We see good representatives here, as well as a lot of teachers here. But before I do that, I want to say this. All schools are really important, whether they be Catholic or public. 
and especially this past two years. COVID has challenged our teachers and has challenged our students. And if you can't appreciate that, I'm not sure what to say. Distance learning, remote learning, Zoom, masks, fights about masks. Our teachers have very, been very much assailed by these challenges that they've had, and they've risen to the occasion, and they have managed to provide an education to our children. So I tell you, whether you're a teacher in the public school or private, um, hats off to you. I give you great credit. I think teachers are amazing. But we are here to talk about Catholic schools. My experience of Catholic school goes back to my time in Wisconsin, and many of you know my story already. Growing up on a small farm in north central Wisconsin, uh, near the village of Poniatuski, it was not a town, it wasn't big enough to be a town, it was a village, consisting of a deserted pickle factory, two bars, and a church and school. That's all that was in it. And the brick building, that was Holy Family School, had three classrooms with linoleum floors. I remember because we had to clean them every Friday afternoon. Taught by three nuns, eight grades, 30 kids in every classroom. And it's amazing to me that those three nuns were able to educate eight grades. You know, um, when I graduated from sixth grade, the church decided to pull back on 7th and 8th grade, and we were sent to public school then in 7th grade. And I still remember the teachers saying to my mom and dad, the children from Holy Family and Poniatuski are the best prepared children in our classes. From all the different catchment area, they are so well educated, and I'm bemused to this day. How did those three nuns who some of them had to teach three grades simultaneously. How did they manage that? It had to be the Holy Spirit. But I think it was also the dedication of women named Dominica, Geraldine, and Theonesta. And I remember how the day went. We'd all gather, keeping our coats on, in the morning. And Sister would come in at 8 o'clock. And she would say, good morning, class. And we would say, good morning, Sister Mary Geraldine. We'd say the Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'd get up and we'd march to church. And we started every day with Mass. Six years of daily Mass. And we heard the Gospel from our Father Ed said over and over again. And then we'd return to our classroom, and then the sister would divide her time and teach us all different kinds of things. Of course, we learned our math, we learned our geography. Not big on science back then, I'm afraid. But we had something called religion class. And we were taught about Jesus and the Trinity, the Baltimore Catechism, what are sacraments, why is Jesus important. And this was part of our education. And I tell you now, and I truly believe this, those six years that were so formative in my life, from first to sixth grade, taught me more about Jesus and being a Christian than three years of deacon formation. No doubt about it. That was just whipped cream on what was already created as a beautiful cake by those nuns. And so I carry that to this day. Now, did we have some lack in those days? Sure. Fayette was really just recess. We had no Fayette class. We didn't have a music class, although Sister Mary Theonesta liked Broadway musicals, and so she'd put on a record and we'd have to sing. I think she engendered in me a love for Broadway musicals. We knew the whole score to the sound of music, of course. It had to be the sound of music with a nun. And now I think today of St. Bart's which has such a different curriculum. Go on St. Bart's website, I dare you, and see what they have to offer. One of the first things I noticed when I went on there the other day is a STEM class, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mechanics. And what are they doing? They're studying robotics. If you're an engineer of any sort, you know robotics is one of the things of the future. I mean, we're gonna have a lot of robots around in the next century. They're studying robotics. 
You go on, you, you see things like uh, spelling bees, you see chess club, you see, you know, different types of, uh, of endeavors that they're doing of all kinds of educational pursuits. You see the bulldog basketball team. And I think it's just wonderful. And you know, I've been working out of the church for the past two years since COVID. And at noon hour, you go out there and you see those kids playing in the playground and you just go, this just looks like a regular elementary school with a big difference. A few weeks ago on the feast of the baptism of our Lord, I talked about how baptism is quite similar to marriage. It is about relationship. It is about the relationship that each of us has with God and Jesus Christ and the Trinity. That's what we're about. And I will tell parents at a baptism, you are the first and foremost teachers of your children. You are the ones that will teach them about God. And then I look at the grandmas and the grandpas and the godparents and the cousins and the friends and say, and you're part of this education too. You're here to teach these children to be good Christians, to love God and love their neighbor as himself. And then you come to the school. And the school is such a valuable resource for us because I'm going to tell you, of course we want wonderful accomplishments for our children. We want them to get great jobs. We want them to have athletic accomplishments. We want them to be artistically uh, accomplished. We want them to have great friendships. But at the end of time, when we stand in front of God, he's not going to ask to see our report cards. He's not going to say, what was your grade point in college? He's not going to say, how many touchdowns did you score in the football games? He's not going to say, could you play the violin? He's going to say, did you know me during your life? Did you follow the example of my son, Jesus Christ, in your life? And the unique and wonderful thing about the Catholic school is that it is their mandate to teach that very thing. Is there a good education to be had here? Yes, just like in the other schools. There's good education, good academics, good preparation. But more importantly, this is a preparation for heaven. This is a prep school for that. And so when you send your children to a Catholic school, you do get that. So I'll close by saying this. I think all schools can provide that. You know, we buried Joe Franson, or at least we had his funeral this morning, and I had spoken with Joe and Mary Joe's children who had all attended Birchfield Elementary School, and we talked about the wonderful examples of Christianity in that public school, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Snicker, Ms. Oliphant. You know, so the public schools can certainly provide uh, moral teachings, although they're somewhat limited by the separation of church and state. You get to the Catholic schools and you see that the mandate here is to teach about Jesus Christ and teach about following Jesus. This week, appreciate all teachers, especially appreciate what we have going on here. There's amazing work being done, amazing formation. Go Bulldogs. Amen. Please stand. Strengthened by our faith and strengthened by our relationship with one another, let us make a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born to the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. St. Paul tells us to strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. Let us now pray to God, who is our hope and strength for those in need. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Hebda, our pastor, Father John, for all priests, deacons, and all who lead us in the search for love and truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who lead and govern the nations throughout the world, and we especially pray for the conflict between Russia and Ukraine at this time, that there will be a peaceful resolution. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all victims of violence in our world, in our country, and in our cities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who serves in ministry of leadership, for teachers, prophets, helpers, and healers, May their work and witness challenge us to transform the present, embrace the future, and lead us closer to one another and to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Catholic schools, <clears throat> for administrators, teachers, and other support staff, may they continue to pass on the faith to the young people they lead and instruct. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Bartholomew School, for the staff, the students, parents, and all who participate in the life of our parish school, May they continue to share the gift of God's love and be inspired and directed by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, hear the prayers of the people formed in the spirit of your love. That the love, may that love be the fire that gives warmth and light to our church direct her apostolic endeavors, including education. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen. Authority. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Oh, 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Saint and sinner, welcome in to this meal of harmony. Lonely people next of kin journey toward the glory tree. Gathered strangers, scattered sheep, at this table all are fed. Blood and body bonds run deep. As your kingdom feast is spread, come and eat this living bread, take and drink this wine. Come be nourished, healed, and fed, shaped into God's sign. Gathered round us, family. May we see the Christ revealed in the breaking of the bread. Living stories, holy meals, we become what we are fed. Broken, shattered, fragile life, now received by you and me. Eating, drinking, joy and strife. Gospel living sets us free. Come and eat this living bread. Take and drink this wine. Come be nourished, healed, and fed, shaped into God's sign. Gathered round us, family. See the Christ in saddened signs, blood poured out in every land. Wounded people wailing cries lie upon our outstretched hands. Jesus is the way through death, truth beyond the present rage, life unfolding, healing breath. Now enfleshed in youth and age. Come and eat this living bread, take and drink this wine. Come be nourished, healed, unfed, shaped into God's sign. Gathered round us, family. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for an announcement and also a word from our principal. You were full of surprises this week. <laughs> Here's the big announcement, and this is from Emily Dalsky. Beginning this week, Emily Dalsky, our staff member, will lead a woman's book study on Carol Hauslander's Read of God, a spiritual classic about the Blessed Mother. This is a wonderful opportunity to learn more about Mary and grow in fellowship with other women of the parish. 
You don't have to be a St. Bart's parishioner to participate. The cost is $15. In-person and virtual options are available. Dates and times can be found in the bulletin or online. The deadline to register is this Tuesday, February 1st. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you the principal of St. Bartholomew School, Mr. Patrick Fox. Thank you, Deacon. Father John, thank you. Um, Deacon, thank you. Um, I wasn't nervous until, Deacon, you opened your mouth and spoke so eloquently. That how do I follow and act like that? Um, I am going to uh, apply with Father to put you on the school payroll as well. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Uh, I don't know if you know, this, uh, one of our parents has dubbed the school, uh, small school, big family. And there's so many small world stories and coincidences that came out tonight. Uh, Ms. Keffler, off to my left, uh, she and I, I, I will always consider you a, a colleague. Uh, congratulations to you on leading a school through the pandemic. You know what it's like. Um, she's one of us, Deacon. Um, Deacon, to your left, there are some, uh, one is an alum of St. Bart's, one is a current student. Uh, and I know you noticed this little glow in the front row. Um, it's because they are Wisconsinites. There's roots there, right? They're, yes, near and dear to your heart. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get tired of talking about that. Uh, so thank you so much for your kind, kind remarks. Uh, one thing popped into my head immediately when you talked about the sisters uh, educating you in your large class sizes. This is a huge coincidence. I was with my mother this morning. I think she's a little older than you, Deacon. Uh, she's 89 years old, um, a few years older. She. I barely got in the door and she rushed up. She had a big 8x10 reprint glossy of her first grade class. And with her, I counted by twos, two, four, six, all the way up to 47 students in this, this little classroom. Uh, it happened to be in New Ulm, Minnesota, with one nun in charge. They looked serious, like they knew what to do. Um, so great education. We at St. Bart's do not have 47 students in each class, but a little bit more on that um, in a moment. As you can tell, Lila and Walker, we grow them uh, public speakers very young at St. Bart's. Walker and Lila, great job. Walk, uh, well, Lila is an old pro. She's in fifth grade. I'm sure she was up here kindergarten for sure by first grade speaking here. And Walker is a new pro. He's a third grader, uh, first year at St. Bart's. Walker, I told you a couple of times today, in a good way, to just follow Lila. That's just good life uh, advice, Walker. Follow Lila. She is a, a gem, as are you. Um, St. Bart students always also learn early on to be grateful for their blessings. They learn that sharing blessings with others is very important and can take many forms. Catholic Schools Week is upon us. We celebrate and perform works of service. One such service project is our annual sock toss. Each child brings in pairs of new socks. We bundle them up and label them. Walker, make sure it says Walker on your bundles of socks. So when you toss it in the gym to try to make a basket, and you make a basket, we'll know who won that prize. Got it? Uh, we try every year to break our previous year's record. I think this is our sixth year. Unbelievably, this year the record number of pairs of socks to beat is 1,868. That's huge. We deliver those socks down to St. Olaf Catholic Church in Minneapolis, where they're distributed to folks in need. So we are literally warming the feet of our friends in Minneapolis. Our kids are making a difference. Uh, enrollment at St. Bart's is growing steadily. Our preschool is at capacity with a waiting list. Our kindergarten through sixth grade enrollment has grown 60% in three years. Uh, we have the highest enrollment in 10 years right now. We put our Catholic faith-based values to work every day. We help each child achieve academic excellence every day. We provide in-person learning every day. Now, during the pandemic, we didn't slow down. We implemented a couple of new instructional strategies to take us from really good to great in reading and math. Your teachers, some of whom are here tonight, are exceptional and deeply committed to meeting the needs of each learner. And we have fun. St. Bart's kids know how to take care of themselves and each other. We challenge each other. We listen to each other. We learn from one another. St. Bart's is what school should be. Safe, welcoming, challenging, and everyone knows you. 
Please know our appreciation for the tremendous support you have extended over the past 66 years, especially when enrollment was low. You showed your faith in us when we needed it most. Now we are proud to tell you we aren't just surviving, we are thriving. Thank you very much, and God bless. I kind of feel like I've been sidelined this whole Mass, you know, so... Um, I probably should have had you all seated, but n never mind, I already had you standing. But I wanted to honor the teachers that are here and administration, especially uh, Mr. Fox, and of course our readers, our servers today, uh, outstanding jobs. Let's give them a round of applause as well. <laughs> Catholic ed education is an extension of the, of the church's evangelistic mandate from the Lord. Go and proclaim the good news, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So we not only educate our children in all the disciplines of education, but also in the faith. So that they encounter the living God, and then can to engage others and the world to be formators and proclaimers of that good news to the world. So to educate, encounter, and engage. So I want to thank the, that extension of our parish we're united as one family, church and school, proclaiming the good news throughout the world and hopefully being a, that strong leaven of grace in our culture that is in deep in need. So we're thankful for their work and the work of the parish as well. So thank you to all of you who support our Catholic schools, uh, sometimes a great sacrifice, uh, but that's what religion is made up, sacrifice on the altar, sacrifice of our lives, sacrifice as parents, sacrifice for your children, sacrifice for education, sacrifice so that we get all to heaven. So thank you all so much, and thank you for the sacrifice of our teachers here. Miss Emily is right in front, so I'm just looking at her, and Miss Jen as well. So thank you all. Um, thank you. That's all I can say. So happy to, and pleased to be here, and one of the highlights of my week is... Um, Wednesday morning mass with the kids, especially I love, I've told this to Mr. Fox many times, but when I see the uh, kindergartners and first graders are doing this, when I'm praying, they have their hands up too. I don't know if they know what they're doing yet. <laughs> they're always kind of doing this and looking around, but they're praying somehow, and they're so cute, uh, just great, and to see them alive in Christ, and hopefully after this pandemic, we can get back to some other normative ways having the fifth and sixth graders be mentors to the uh, kindergartners and first graders and second graders as well, and to have parents and grandparents back to that morning mass on Wednesday, and um, yeah, just to see everyone together again. So let's pray for that as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God.
God's people symbol. 